Guess how many sheets of paper a 2,500 year old sword can cut through? Go ahead. Guess. One, five, maybe 10 if you're feeling generous. Try 20. Clean cuts, no effort. And here's the kicker. This blade has been buried in mud since before Jesus Christ was born. No rust, no corrosion, sharper than the day it was forged. But wait, it gets worse. While you're marveling at your latest iPhone upgrade, I'm about to show you seven ancient Chinese inventions so impossibly advanced that modern science still can't figure out how they worked. We're not talking about primitive cave dwellers here. We're talking about technological wizards whose secrets vanished into thin air. And if you think that sword is impressive, well, you haven't seen anything yet. Here's something that'll make you question everything you think you know about human progress. A millennium ago, ancient China wasn't just ahead of the rest of the world. They were operating on a completely different level. Like a medieval reality show where one contestant secretly had access to future technology. But here's the twist that'll blow your mind. Some of their most revolutionary breakthroughs didn't just get forgotten. They vanished completely. Others were so catastrophically misused that they became cautionary tales of wasted genius. Now, before we dive into this rabbit hole, let me be crystal clear about something. This isn't some internet conspiracy theory or clickbait nonsense. Every single invention I'm about to reveal is documented in ancient historical records. We're talking about real artifacts sitting in museums, backed by peer-reviewed archaeological research that challenges everything you thought you knew about ancient capabilities. Here's what's going to happen in the next 20 minutes. First, I'll show you three catastrophic failures that set human progress back by centuries. These weren't just missed opportunities. These were technologies so advanced that losing them was like watching the Library of Alexandria burn down three times in a row. Then, and this is where it gets really interesting, I'll reveal four lost masterpieces that could have completely rewritten the trajectory of human civilization. We're talking about inventions that could have launched the space age 1500 years early. Technologies that make our modern achievements look like children's toys. By the time we're done here, you'll understand something that'll keep you awake at night. The real dark ages weren't in Europe. They were happening in the forgotten workshops of ancient China where genius was being born and dying in the shadows of history. Picture this. What if I told you that right now, as you're watching this video, we're living through our own technological dark age, that we're not the pinnacle of human achievement, but rather survivors picking through the ruins of civilizations that achieve things we can barely comprehend. Well, buckle up, because that's exactly what I'm about to prove to you. But first, let me ask you something that'll make you question everything. What if the biggest tragedy in human history wasn't a war or plague? What if it was genius that arrived too early? Here's the thing about being too far ahead. It's not just inconvenient, it's catastrophic. When you build tech that needs an entire industrial system to maintain it and that system doesn't exist yet, your genius dies with you. That's exactly what happened to ancient China. Not once, not twice, but over and over again. Let me show you three inventions that failed, not because they were bad, but because they were impossibly good. Imagine if we lost the ability to make computers tomorrow. That's what happened to China with precision timekeeping. In 1088 CE, a man named Su Song built something that sounds like science fiction a 40-foot tall clock tower. This wasn't just a clock, it was a mechanical universe. Picture this, over 100 bronze figures announcing the time, bells ringing on schedule, doors opening and closing to reveal the hours, all powered by water. The escapement is the heart of every clock. It makes that tick-tock sound. Europe didn't invent this until 300 years later. But Su Song had already perfected it. Here's the kicker. This machine was so complex, it needed a team of engineers just to keep it running. When Su Song died, nobody else understood how it worked. Within decades, 
this marble became scrap metal. Stop for a second, think about this. China invented precision mechanical engineering 800 years before Europe. Then they lost it, completely. Here's what they don't teach you in school. These weren't primitive failures. These were techs so advanced, they needed industrial level support. China invented the future, then watched it crumble because they were too far ahead of their own civilization. Sometimes the most brilliant engineering gets wasted on the wrong problem. The South Pointing Chariot was a mechanical marvel, a vehicle with a figure on top that always pointed south. No matter which way the chariot turned, it used complex gears to maintain direction. Think of it like the world's first mechanical GPS. But here's the problem. They used this incredible gear tech for ceremonies instead of practical navigation. It's like inventing the internet and only using it to send birthday cards. While China was building mechanical computers for parades, they could have revolutionized navigation and transportation. Instead, this tech was lost when dynasties changed. When you discover the most powerful force in the ancient world and use it for fireworks, you've missed the point entirely. Chinese alchemists invented gunpowder around the 9th century, but they weren't trying to make weapons. They were trying to make immortality potions. For centuries, gunpowder was used for mystical ceremonies and pretty explosions. Military uses were treated as side curiosities. Imagine if the Wright brothers invented the airplane and only used it to deliver newspapers. That's essentially what China did with gunpowder. By the time they realized its true potential, other civilizations had caught up and passed them. But if you think those failures were tragic, wait until you see what they got right, and then lost forever. The next invention I'll show you defies every law of physics we thought we understood. What if I told you there's a sword that's been buried in mud for 25 centuries, and it's still sharper than the knife in your kitchen? This isn't just about ancient weapons. This is about metallurgy mastery that we've completely lost. We're talking about tech that makes our modern steel look primitive. This sword proves that ancient metallurgy was operating at a level we're only now beginning to understand. In 1965, archaeologists in China discovered something impossible, a bronze sword from the spring and autumn period, 2,500 years old, no rust, no corrosion. They are sharp enough to cut through 20 sheets of paper without effort. Modern scientists using electron microscopes discovered the secret. The blade has a chromium oxide coating just 10 to 15 micrometers thick. That's thinner than a human hair. Here's what'll blow your mind. We didn't figure out chromium plating until 1926. The Chinese were doing it 2,500 years ago. It's like finding a smartphone in King Tut's tomb. The coating is so precise that modern metallurgists have tried to copy it and failed. We can see exactly how it was done under microscopes, but we can't reproduce the process. The Chinese weren't just making swords, they were doing atomic level engineering when Europe was still figuring out how to make iron. They mastered anti-rust tech 2,000 years before we invented stainless steel. And that's just the beginning of their optical wizardry. The next invention literally bends light itself. Imagine holding a mirror that looks completely normal. Solid bronze, perfect reflection. But when sunlight hits it just right, it projects images that shouldn't exist. This isn't magic. This is physics, so advanced that it took modern science decades to figure out how it worked. And we still can't copy it. These mirrors prove that ancient Chinese craftsmen understood wave optics and precision manufacturing at a level that would make modern engineers weep. Han Dynasty bronze mirrors that appear completely solid and normal. But under direct sunlight, they project the decorative pattern from the back of the mirror onto walls. The pattern you can't see becomes visible through light. Japanese scientists spent decades trying to understand this. They finally discovered that tiny thickness changes in the bronze create the optical effect. We're talking about changes measured in micrometers. Think about this for a second. They were manipulating light itself while Europe was still afraid of shadows. 
When these mirrors were first studied in the 20th century, scientists called them impossible. The physics didn't make sense. It took electron microscopes and computer modelling to understand what ancient craftsmen were doing by hand. Modern foundries have tried to recreate these mirrors using computer-controlled casting. They can't do it. The precision required is beyond our current manufacturing abilities. These mirrors aren't just artefacts. They're proof that ancient China had mastered precision manufacturing techniques we're only now rediscovering. They were creating optical illusions through metallurgy when the rest of the world thought magic was real but perhaps their most sophisticated lost invention could have launched the space age 1500 years early. What if I told you that while medieval Europe was still debating whether the Earth was flat, China had already built mechanical computers that mapped the cosmos? This isn't just about astronomy. This is about computational thinking that could have revolutionized science, navigation, and our understanding of the universe, centuries before it actually happened. These devices represent mechanical computation that could have accelerated scientific discovery by over a thousand years. Ancient Chinese astronomical devices used intricate bronze gear systems to track celestial movements. They predicted eclipses with stunning accuracy. These weren't simple calendars. They were mechanical computers. Picture hundreds of bronze gears working together like clockwork. These machines could calculate planet positions predict lunar phases, even forecast rare astronomical events years in advance. All without electricity, all without modern math. We're talking about gear-driven precision that we didn't match until the invention of modern clockwork in Europe. It's like finding a mechanical calculator in a medieval monastery. These devices could perform calculations that required multiple variables and long-term tracking. They were doing celestial navigation and astronomical prediction with mechanical precision. While Europe was using basic tools for navigation, China had mechanical computers that could predict eclipses decades in advance. They were doing computational astronomy when the rest of the world thought the stars were painted on a dome. If this tech had been preserved and developed, we could have had accurate astronomical predictions centuries earlier. Navigation would have been revolutionized. The scientific method could have emerged in China instead of Europe. The final lost invention might be the most heartbreaking of all because it's something so beautiful, so impossible, that it reads like poetry. What if I told you that ancient China was producing textiles so advanced that modern science calls them impossible? This isn't just about clothing. This is about manufacturing precision that we've lost completely. We're talking about nanotechnology level production achieved by hand. These garments represent manufacturing precision that makes our modern advanced fabrics look crude by comparison. Silk garments from the Mawangdui tomb dating to 168 BCE. A complete robe that weighs less than 50 grams. That's lighter than two slices of bread. Fabric so thin it can be folded into a matchbox yet so durable it survived 2,000 years underground. This silk is thinner than modern surgical gauze. We're talking about individual fibers that are almost invisible to the naked eye. The Chinese were producing nanotechnology level textiles when the rest of the world was wearing animal skins. Modern textile engineers using electron microscopes can see the weave pattern perfectly. They can count every thread but they cannot determine how fibers this thin were produced without breaking. It's like finding a smartphone and being able to see every circuit, but having no idea how to make the microchips. This isn't just lost technique. This is lost understanding of material science at the molecular level. They were manipulating silk proteins in ways we're only now beginning to understand with modern chemistry. The fact that these garments survived 2,000 years underground proves their durability. Modern synthetic fabrics would have fallen apart centuries ago. And that brings us to the most important question of all. Here's the terrifying truth that should keep you awake at night. We are not the peak of human achievement. We're not even close. We're standing on the shoulders of giants whose knowledge we've forgotten. Every single day, we lose more traditional techniques. 
more ancient wisdom, more irreplaceable human knowledge. Right now, somewhere in the world, the last person who knows how to do something incredible is dying. And their knowledge dies with them. But here's the inspiring part. You have the power to change this. If this video opened your eyes to how much we've lost, here's what I need you to do. Hit that like button. Subscribe to this channel because I'm going to keep digging up the buried secrets of human genius. But more importantly, here's your homework. Research one traditional craft or technique from your own culture that's disappearing. Maybe it's your grandmother's recipe. Maybe it's a building technique. Maybe it's a way of making music. Share it in the comments. Let's start preserving what's left before it's too late. This isn't just history. This is a wake-up call. Understanding what we've lost is the first step to making sure we don't lose what we have. Ancient China's lost technologies could fill entire libraries. Every single one represents human potential that we'll never get back. But here's what gives me hope. You're here. You're curious. You're asking questions. Which lost invention shocked you the most? Let me know in the comments. Your curiosity drives what I investigate next. Because the greatest tragedy isn't what we've lost. It's what we'll lose if we stop caring about preserving human knowledge. The future depends on remembering the past. And that starts with you.